Hello and welcome to another unboxing from Pushing Cardboard. I'm Grant Lindenberg and uh, today we're having a look at uh, a new release from Compass Games. This is called World War II Campaigns 1940, 41, and 42. Um, this, is, uh, this is a reprint of a, of a few old uh, Games Designer Workshop products. They were called the Series 120. They were meant to be played in uh, 120 minutes, have less than 120 counters. I think that was sort of the the gimmick there. Uh, they came in a small box, sort of, uh, kind of a, the box was like about that big. So um, anyway, uh, Compass has got the rights to them, and they decided to print three of them in a uh, all together in a in a one box uh, reprint. Uh, I don't know if there was more than more than three of them originally uh, printed uh, back in the day. I, I always remember seeing the the 1941, which is the uh, the invasion of France one, and uh, and this uh, the 1941 one, which is uh, East Front. I I don't know that I ever remember seeing this one uh, set in the um, set in the Pacific. Anyway, um, there's three of them here, and they've uh, they've all been uh, redone, uh, put in re one. Uh, one box. Um, the interesting thing, other interesting thing about this series, uh, this original series from GDW, is uh, each game had a different designer. So uh, in this one, uh, fr um, Frank Chadwick does the 1940, John Astell does the 1941, and uh, Mark Miller of uh, Traveler fame does the uh, 1942 game. Um, uh, the box gives us a rating of low to medium for complexity and uh, medium solitaire suitability, but uh, of course average time to play, 120 minutes or less. So uh, all that said is an introduction. Let's, uh, let's get right in and, and see what's in this, uh, see what's in the box in this uh, reprint. Um, I'm guessing they had to redo the maps. I, I can't imagine they had the original art files from back then. Back then when this was originally published, there wouldn't have been um, the kind of computer-generated art that we have today. Or even if it's not computer-generated, they, they, they didn't have the, uh, the ability to, to save it, even to save it as a PDF or a, or a Photoshop file or anything like that. Okay, so we got some dice, we got some baggies for the counters, three bags, probably that's probably one, one bag per game probably is uh, is all you need here because the rules are the counters aren't going to be too steep. The rule book is uh, here's the first one. This is the 1940 rule book. It's uh, it's only 12 pages long, double column, um, fairly thick though, not a ton of white space on these. So it's uh, 12 pages, but uh, 12 full pages of rule for sure because uh, there's no. Um, there's not much. There's nothing in terms of uh, designers' notes or anything like that, other than right at the beginning here. Uh, comes in uh, as uh, glossy paper, um, but uh, you know, a good-looking rule book all the same. Here's the 1941 rule book. Uh, it's 12 pages as well, but uh, the rules look slightly less dense here in that there's. Uh, more space at the front and uh, a complete uh, on the back. Uh, it's just a complete uh, advertisement. So uh, a little bit, just a slight bit less rules for 1941 and uh, for the 1942 in the Pacific. Uh, well, it looks like we have a counter manifest on the back page. So uh, well, this is 14 pages, but. There's just 12 pages of rules, it looks like. Similar looking rule book. There we go. Uh, a little, uh, little bit of map clarifications, or, you know, otherwise known as errata. Sometimes uh, it gets caught between when it's printed and uh, before it's shipped. So uh, we have a little a change to the terrain effects chart in one game. And this, a little some map numbering that's incorrect, a duplicate counter, uh, and a couple of clarifications. Not a not a lot. Here's a player aid for 1940. 
and a terrain effects chart. So there we go, 1940, and the 1940 TEC. I think we're going to see it similar for all of these. Here's the 1942. Oh, no, uh, no TEC on the 1942. Uh, well, that's probably because um, most of it's going to happen out on the water. And uh, 1941. This will have a no, no train effects chart is just down here. So tiny train effects chart. So there we go. And now we have the. Uh, the three maps. Oh, these maps are printed on much bigger hexes than the originals were. The original was like half inch, as I recall it, half inch counters with your, you know, your standard sort of map size for back in the day. These, these, I think these uh, series 180 or 120 games came out in uh, uh, late 70s, early 80s, I think. Uh, oh. Let's see, that's about as far back as I can get the map. This is, uh, we'll have to look at the sizes. This is obviously the 1940 map. Uh, sort of looks like uh, two feet by one and a half, something like that. It's hard, I don't know. Uh, very, very functional, bright, good bright colors, functional map. Just the way I like it. If you're a regular listener, you'll you'll know that this is a that's what I like most in a map is uh, I take function over form all day every day. Very good, very good looking map. Oh yeah, this is great. Okay, so that's the 1940 map. Might as well have a look at all of them. Here's the 1940 East Front map. Let's Looks to be the same. No, this is this one's a little bit bigger. Well, Rush is very big, so there you go. A little bit bigger map. Same exact same style though. Very, very usable. Uh, you know, good looking without being, you know, super pretty. But that's okay. Uh, everything is really clear. Obviously, in this game, rail lines are important. And then finally, here's the 1942. We're going to see a lot of blue on this one. Here we go. So we've got uh, French into China, Malaya. Borneo, Philippines up here. Again, good looking map. Uh, uh, really like the look of it. And finally we have, uh, I assume this is finally, yeah. And we've got, uh, looks like two sheets of counters. We'll wrap them in plastic. I don't want to uh, don't want to wreck any of these. They're a little uh, a little hard to get into. There we go. This is the what was the record for the longest time it's ever. What's going on here? It's ever taken me into get into a counter sheet, I'm sure. But there we are. Uh, good looking, five eighths inch counters, very large print. Let's get a get a zoom in here for you. These are the 1940s. These uh, so the and then. These are 1941 counters up here, but you, you, these are real standard looking counters. The, you know, the, um, uh, 
I'm sure it's going to be combat strength and movement allowance. Uh, you have uh, the size units here. These are uh, corps and divisions we have here. Here we have armies. And uh, not oh, double-sided only in the sense that they uh, they tell you on the back which uh, which game they belong to, 1940 or 41. Uh, so that's interesting. Single-sided counters, and uh, the back side just says 1940, 41, or 42. Here's uh, here's the last of them. And it looks like these ones for 1942 just have a single number, but the. Uh, the unit sizes are, are, are uh, smaller here. Uh, brigades, uh, even battalions, I guess. Yeah, well, there we go. Um, all those, uh, okay, yeah, there we go, that's the backside. So that's it, that's, uh, that's everything in the box for uh, World War II campaigns. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. Um, I've been playing so many heavy games, the idea of, uh, of trying one of these that plays in 120 minutes is really appealing to me. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Please do, uh, do come by the website at pushingcardboard.com or uh, also check out the podcast, Pushing Cardboard. It's, uh, wherever you get your podcasts, you'll find it there. Thanks again.